In this webinar, we will touch upon various characteristics of the new SME instruments, in particular the timelines and conditions, the topics that are possible to apply. We will also compare the instrument to other types of instruments that have been introduced in Horizon 2020, such as the Fast Track to Innovation instrument. And finally, we'll uh, guide you through the evaluation process and give you a few useful tips for you to file your projects. If we look at the uh, funding schemes now available to uh, SMEs, there are quite a lot of them. And the biggest one, of course, was formerly called SD7 and has now increased in size under the new name Horizon 2020. It's also more focused on uh, innovation, uh, which means closer to market activities, which is a good thing for, for SMEs. There is also a program called Eureka and its uh, different implementations, for example, Eurostars. And that program will also continue in 2014. In fact, the budget has now tripled for Eurostar, which makes it a very attractive scheme for SMEs, in particular, research performing SMEs. Finally, the program previously known as CIP, Competitiveness and Innovation Framework Program, will still remain, although with a smaller budget. It will be renamed COSME, and it will still be focusing on SMEs, in particular on market replication activities, when you have a product and you are now in a deployment phase. But part of this program has also been re introduced into Horizon 2020 in the form of the new SME instrument. And the focus of today's webinar is to give you more information about this new instrument. The aim of the Commission is to fund the companies between the research phase and the commercialization phase. That particular time gap is known as the valley of death because that is the place where a lot of companies uh, are struggling because there is no funding available. Public funding usually stops at the research stage while the commercialization funding uh, with, from uh, business angels and, and venture capital requires you to have a validated product. And in between uh, the so-called uh, innovation phase, there is very little funding available. The Commission has decided to attack this problem uh, by providing different grants uh, which will have also different level of uh, technology readiness. In Horizon 2020, there are two main instruments, one uh, focusing on uh, research and innovation with a funding level of 100%, and another um, level focusing on pure innovation with a uh, funding of 70%. The other instruments, such as uh, Eureka Eurostars and COSME, uh, will remain, and they have a typically lower funding level because they are closer to market. The SM instrument is, in fact, part of this innovation funding level at 70%. And that means that 70% of the cost of the SME can be charged to the project and funded by the European Commission. But the SME can also apply an overhead rate of 25%. So for each 100 euro of cost, in fact, the eligible cost will be 125, and the funding received will be 70% of 125. That's something very important to understand for cash-strapped SMEs. The SME instrument is a three-phase process. It starts with a business plan, which has to be refined and combined with some feasibility studies in order to be ready to present to investors. You can see here um, the activities that are supported under each phase. Typically at phase one, it will be the proof of concept stage, which will help refine the business plan, while at stage two, there will be prototyping, and testing activities which will support the business plan and prepare the company for the final stage where investors can be approached, business angel venture capital firms. 
How does this work in detail? In phase one, the Commission is uh, requiring a 10-page business plan to be submitted. Uh, and that uh, business plan will allow them to allocate 50,000 euro um, lump sum funding for a period of six months. That period of six months will enable the company to conduct more feasibility studies, IPR checks, partner search, etc. In order for the company to prepare an updated business plan. That updated business plan, which is about 30 pages, including a description of work for phase two, will be required to decide about the larger funding. Now, that funding can be up to 2.5 million euro for a single applicant, which means that as an SME, you are entitled to submit something, a project, and get up to 2.5 million euro. The project phase will be typically 12 to 24 months when it comes to uh, the phase two. Once this phase is completed, then phase three will start. And phase three does not have any direct funding from the commission. But the commission hopes to use the SME instruments as a quality label to facilitate access to private financing, for example, uh, venture capital. The conditions uh, is, of course, to submit uh, the project. Uh, it is a continuous call, so you can submit at any time. But there will be evaluation conducting, uh, conducted after specific cutoff uh, dates. The first cutoff date for phase one is on the 18th of June, 2014. And the first cutoff date for phase two is on the 9th of October, 2014. And then, as you can see, there will be further uh, cut of dates uh, roughly every quarter. Two important things to keep in mind. Only one application is allowed per SME, whether it's phase one or phase two. So you cannot apply, um, provide two uh, applications, for example, for phase one. And you cannot apply for phase one and phase two simultaneously. This is to reduce the number of applications, because the commission has expected a very large number of applications for this instrument. Also, it is not required to be successful in phase one in order to apply to phase two. In other words, you can apply directly in phase two if you feel that your business plan is elaborate enough. Or even if you have failed in phase one, you could still apply in phase two. Now, we're going to go into the details of how these instruments have been implemented in each work program. As you may know, Horizon 2020 is organized around three pillars. And the first one is called LEIT. And it uh, regroups activities around space, ICT, nanotechnologies, and biotechnologies. On this table, you can see the work program on the left, the detailed topic in the middle, and some specific conditions on the right, such as the funding rate, which is in general 70% for that instrument, the funding size, min and max expected funded, and finally the timeline for these calls. As you can see here, the topics are relatively generic. So these are really meant as bottom-up instruments. You come up with your own idea, and it can cover any aspect of the work program. Sometimes the commission will um, show preferences for specific applications uh, or services. But that is not prescriptive, which means that you can come up with an idea that is not aligned with their preferences and that should not really have um, an impact on your evaluation outcome. Now, some instruments have chosen a fairly more restrictive topic description. And uh, you can see, for example, in the Secure Society that the focus is on the protection of urban soft targets and critical infrastructure. And that's an instrument where you do have to fit within that particular subtopic. But overall, the topics are very open on purpose. As you can see, the um, contribution from the EC is 70%. And the typical amount they're expecting to fund is between 500,000 euro up to 2.5 million euros. But there are two exceptions. 
in the health work program, the topic is relatively specific and it's focusing on the clinical validation of biomarkers because the Commission expects that these projects will include research type activities, in particular uh, clinical validation tests, which can be quite expensive to conduct. The funding rate has been increased to 100% and the funding size has been increased to a range between 1 and 5 million euros. Also, it's worth to note that in the society work program, the SM instrument has not been implemented in 2014, but will only start in 2015. Further information on this course can be found on the participant portal where all of the topics are described and all of the documents can be uh, downloaded. There is another instrument that is worth mentioning uh, in order not to confuse it with the SM instrument. The Commission has also introduced a new framework uh, or a new instrument called Fast Track to Innovation, FTI. You can see here the implementation of that instrument in the Transport World Program. That instrument is different from the SME instrument. It is working as a mini cooperative project. So here you have to submit as a consortium but you cannot have more than five companies. It will also work as a continuous call with cut updates every quarter, but it will only start in 2015. The topics will be open as well. It will be a bottom-up instrument. However, you can see here that it doesn't work as the SME instrument because the SME instrument is really focusing on single applicants. So you as an SME will apply to the SME instrument and will receive the entire funding and you may elect to subcontract some of the activities to your research partners in phase two, but the SME is really required as the lead. In fact, the instrument is not accessible to any other entity. However, in fast track innovation, the instrument is accessible to any entity, large or small, academic, industrial. Obviously, the SME participation is encouraged by the European Commission, but it is not a requirement. How does the review process work for the SME instrument? As in previous frameworks, the application will be evaluated on three dimensions, and each of these dimensions will be marked out of five. The order of importance of these is slightly different from previous frameworks. In the SME instrument, the most important criteria is impact, which means the exploitation of your project results. And that is why the application is really formatted as a business plan. But obviously the Commission is looking for very innovative technologies and will also assess uh, in a second priority the excellence uh, of the technology and science behind the technology. And finally, the implementation will also be assessed. The way evaluation will happen is that remote evaluators will mark the proposals. They will start with evaluating the impact criterion, then the excellence criterion, and finally the implementation criterion. Each of the criterion will have a threshold of four. And if it's not achieved, then the evaluation of the proposal will be stopped. So the evaluator will stop reading your proposal if it doesn't mark your impact for other five. The overall threshold combination of all three criteria is not 12, it's actually 13. So you have to pass, of course, all of the criteria threshold, but also you have to be above 13, which is a very high score. Please note also that the um, evaluation relies on, uh, on, on the median of the uh, individual scores. Um, it is not based on a consensus meeting. So the evaluators don't have a chance to influence each other to reach a consensus. Everyone ranks or marks uh, remotely and then we take the median. So if we look at the distribution of evaluation in typical calls, you will see that a lot of applications end up in the middle category, the average applications. And of course they have no chance of getting funded because they haven't reached the threshold. 
for those of you who will reach the threshold above 13, the good applications, then there will still be the issue that there might not be enough funding to cover all of the applications. In fact, we expect this to be the case because of the number of applications that will be received. So it is very probable that only the best of the best will be funded above 14, for example, here. The problem is that the effort to turn a good proposal into an excellent proposal is often as much as to create the proposal in the first instance. And that is a quite difficult undertaking for an SME. The calls have become very competitive, and even if this is a new instrument, we can expect that there are a lot of experienced proposal writers out there that will support SMEs. Since only excellent proposal will get financed, you don't have a choice. You have to be among the best. But the fact that the proposals are smaller, between 10 and 30 pages, does not make it more simple. In fact, you have to be extremely concise uh, and practical into a very small number of pages. And that requires even more skills than writing a 100-page proposal, even if it may require a little bit less time. So make sure you engage the right resources. Um, any SMEs will know that the time is better spent on running the business. We also expect a very large number of applications, uh, which means that the uh, success rate will be most likely below 5%, probably closer to 2 or 3%. But there is possibility to engage external help. A lot of uh, writers are able to work on success fees. Uh, and also, uh, there are grants available from uh, national authorities in certain countries, like France uh, or Sweden, which can be used to hire external help. So if you need external help, have a look at uh, Zaz Ventures. Uh, we are an experienced firm with uh, product applications uh, over the past 10 years in uh, different fields. We focus especially on SMEs, and we provide them with support based on a success fee only model. So essentially, we only get paid if you successfully raise the public funding from the European Commission. And that is a big differentiator from other firms out there. A few of the products we've been working with in FP7 and AAL, you can see here we've achieved excellent marks, uh, way above, above 13. And these products have all been funded. Uh, and the SMEs driving these projects are now uh, developing the research and the project based on those funding. So please do not hesitate to call us. We are at your disposal. We can provide more information on the SME instrument, and we can also review your initial proposal and give you some tips on how to improve it. Please contact us, and thank you very much for watching this webinar.